lot of hard plastics. Try to have some fun with it. One of the biggest complaints I have in the back side of this car is... Hey guys and welcome to Car Fanatic. Today we are going to be reviewing this 2023 Audi A1 S edition. Looking at the key design we can still see the, well, usual Audi key, Volkswagen key. Just name it as you wish, but we have the <laughs> same key as we had like years ago. <coughs> but well, if it works, you don't really have to change it. This car doesn't have the keyless entry, so we just need the swivel wheel. Otherwise, you will just be able to open up the car and close it with a swivel around the door handles. And then, well, it will just close or open itself. We can see that this is the S edition model. It has the sportier grill over there. The normal car doesn't even come with LED headlights as standard. It just has the normal halogen headlamps. In a car of this price, well, it is doable, but even Skoda has LED lightning as standard. Not the optional headlights, but just the normal uh, LEDs. But well, it works. So <laughs> Audi still does it. We can see that it has some very nice Ur Quattro design elements to it. It doesn't have the honeycomb grille, but it has, well, some kind of a variation to it, which also looks very, very nice. Also, this car is fitted with some black package plus. The plus stands for the black Audi rings. The black package just means that it has all of the, well, chrome silver bits are fitted in black so you can see that this whole trim is in black also around the window sills well those are <laughs> in the a1 it doesn't really change that much because it's rubber but in most of the cars it just makes the chrome trims around there in black and we can also see in the back we have some nice black audi logos the S edition also adds some nice side skirts. The car is really, really dirty. So excuse me for that because I drove through the country roads to get to this location. But we can see that it's just sitting on some nice, really, really nice Audi factory sport wheels. Those are some 18 inch alloy wheels, which are the Audi sport, just like the writing over there. Those are some Audi sport wheels, which look really, really, really nice. Some people just say that the wheels make the car, but I can agree in 100% with that. So <laughs> they work really, really well on this car. We've also seen them on some Audi TT models before. I can show a picture up there. We can see them on the Audi Q3. Well, it's a very usual or not usual. It's a very common uh, Audi Sport wheel design in that kind of sense. With this model, you can see that it changed a lot. It grew by a lot of centimeters. You can see the, well, the sport back lines are still there. It's sporty just as it was, but it is a lot longer. So that way it's a lot more practical and there is a lot more place for the rear passengers as well. It is quite a difference comparing it to the previous Audi A1 generation. I can show you a picture from the back over here and even looking at the well, the overall form has kind of stayed the same, but the front also changed and grew. And well, it has a lot more presence. If you see this here rear window, you'll be like, whoa, yeah, there comes a really nice car. And I'll maybe have to get out of the way, even though it's just, well, this car is a one liter 95 horsepower. We do also have it with a 1.5 liter. Uh, 150 horsepower and a 2 liter version but well the most common will be the 1 and 1.5 liter it's all petrol especially in the Netherlands but well there is some nice engine options if you may ask me let's turn on the LED lights that way you'll just see what the design of them really is we can see that it well it illuminates all of those little points it's really aggressive we have some nice LED turning signals. In the front they aren't dynamic, but in the rear they are. Let me show you around. That way when locking or unlocking the car, you'll be greeted with a nice, very dynamic turning signal. It makes it a lot <laughs> premium feeling than uh, the usual standard. Well, it looks a lot more premium and upmarket than the normal standard turning signals. We can also see the nice diffuser on the S edition. It is aggressive, but the normal car doesn't have it that aggressive. 
There's a nice little diffuser over there in the middle. The 2 liter version also has some two exhaust pipes over there, but the normal car doesn't. It has an exhaust pipe, but it is <laughs> but it's hidden underneath the rear diffuser. It's also very nice that Audi didn't bother to make like fake exhaust pipes over this because it would look silly in my opinion. So this is a very nice well compromise to make, but it's also a very nice design. Just very sleek design in my opinion looking at the trunk of this car if you open it up that's where really the magic happened it is a lot longer maybe a little bit deeper than the previous version of this car we have some more storage underneath here this car doesn't have the audi sound system but if it had the audi sound system well you wouldn't be able to fit the spare tire over there but this way it well makes it a little bit more practical if you need to carry a lot more belongings or groceries in that sense we can also see some nice grocery hooks over there and we can move this or take it out if you well pull it and then that way you can just fold the seats from over here there is no flat loading bay in the trunk because it doesn't have the adaptive uh, lid if it had the adaptive lid you could just move it up and then you would have a very flat loading bay that way while well, moving items in and out would be a lot easier but this car sadly doesn't have it but it is possible so let's put it back and move on to the back seats of this car all right so let's move this seat back and we are well greeted with a nice design also in the back of this car sadly the materials in the back are well it's a little bit worse than if they were it is a lot of hard plastics but well they are angled really sporty and the design of it is really nice but it still is hard plastic in the back also in the front of the car but we'll get there in a second moving in and out of this car can be a little bit difficult because this is well it is quite <laughs> wide it has a very nice pillar over there but in terms of head space you'll need to watch your head a little bit because it is well <laughs> it is present so that's a really nice or really nice it's a really nice design element but it's not that practical for the people that are going to be getting in and out of the audi a1 sport bag so let's close off the door we can still it's not a very hollow sound but it's a typical Volkswagen Audi group nice sound <laughs> even for the Audi A1 this car is fitted with leather and fabric we can get it with fully leather also with some red stitching but it's everything is an option in the back we have some power windows as standard we have some isofix points on the outside seats and in terms of yeah, well, sitting comfort it is fine the seats give you a lot of support and well it's basically because of the s edition seats and the middle seat is quite narrow so and we have a transmission tunnel over here so if you're well if somebody is trying to sit in the middle seat the headroom will be limited because of the well, kind of sloping roof line and there is a kind of a hump over here so people that are a little bit taller or adults will or may have some problem sitting here in the middle seat but well for like shorter distances it should be fine so you can easily fit three children here two adults or two plus <laughs> basically but it can be a little bit of a squeeze we have a lot of space for your water bottles on both sides of course and a little bit more storage it isn't there is no lining over here so it's all plastic sadly and one of the biggest complaints i have in the back side of this car is the speaker design because those speakers aren't in the doors anymore but they are in the back that way when you're sitting in <laughs> one of those seats and the driver has some very nice music blasting to the speakers they are literally blasting in your ear which can be a lot annoying i know you can set the balance and to the front but well it is a kind of a design flaw in that sense it depends on the driver and the music choice and how loud it is but even then it's it's a well it's a very specific design choice in that sense so that's about it for the back let's move up to the front 
let's climb out the Audi A1. Like I said, it can be kind of a hassle because of those high design elements, but it, it it's doable for me and it should be doable for most of uh, adults. We have a very nice hook over here for your clothes or jacket. That's why you won't have to have your jacket lingering around the whole cabin. And also we had a very nice little bonus of a bird. Well, <laughs> let's just ignore that. Looking at the front, like I've said, the materials are, well, they look really sporty and there is some piano black uh, elements over here. But like I've said, everything is of hard plastic. It is made really sturdy and durable, but well, like I've said, it's, it's made of hard plastics and there is no lining, so that way if you have some stuff over here you will hear it rattling a little bit more than usual but even then it looks a lot better than the previous version but the quality of the previous version and the materials that were used on the inside were a lot better than this one sadly we can see some s-line logo over there when we step inside of the car we can see that the seats are like in the back fitted with some nice half fabric half leather combination with lumber support we can also move them to the back there is no adjustment from the front portion and we cannot extend them sadly in the audi a1 and the pro line version or the base model version have well kind of a lot flatter seats without the bolstering on the sides so let's hop in and escape the cold especially <laughs> over here but when I step inside of this cabin, I'm really amazed <laughs> comparing it to the previous version. We can see the whole design changed. Everything is well angled to the driver. We can see that. Let's turn on the ignition for a bit. We don't have a well swivel design <laughs> MME screen over here. Everything is touch sensitive, so it's it's a lot better on this model we also have some wireless apple carplay we have usb ports over there for charging your mobile phone there is also an option to have a wireless charger over there but this one doesn't have it sadly the armrest is adjustable in height and we also have some storage over there we have a manual handbrake which is very nice for some uh, action on wet roads if you may wish there is a cup holder and also two well bigger cup holders or bottle holders over there this car has the five speed manual transmission if you get the 110 horsepower version you have a six speed manual or just a normal uh, dsg transmission and the other models the engines just stay the same the 95 110 150 or 200 horsepower this car also has a climate control option. The buttons still feel like an Audi should feel. They have a very nice click to them. It is made of, well, it's, it's really sturdy. It's just like you uh, would expect from an Audi. The light controls are over here. Everything is, well, everything is buttons. There is no other swivel wheels anymore, but it's just all of a button. We can control the mirrors from here. Furthermore, we can see some nice LED lighting in this edition. We can turn them all on with this button. We have a very nice LED light over here. This car also has the perforated leather with a flat bottom steering wheel. All of the buttons over here are, well, like I've said, they are very clicky. We can control how the gauges look by this view button. We can make them smaller or larger and we can swivel through all of the menus and see the driver assists and well you can customize it to your liking if the car would have navigation this car doesn't it only has the apple carplay and android auto otherwise you will just have the navigation over there well that's a very nice addition to have your navigation there so it is possible we have a cruise control stuck over here it didn't really change up down push it away from it to turn it off pull it towards it to turn it on or resume it we also have a lane assist button over there. We just click it and then it will turn on or off the lane assist if you're driving on some kind of country roads. That way it won't really steer you back <laughs> if you're in the middle of the road. So it's a very handy feature that Audi just thought of just with a touch of a button you can turn it off. Moving on to the center console, everything is made of sturdy materials like I've said. It doesn't really squeak and it is made of really nice materials. We can see some kind of aluminium-ish look over here the top of the dashboard is made of some softer 
touch squidgy plastics or a mix of plastics, I don't know what it really is, but it's not leather. Um, it's a leather look. It's some black headlining, which is very nice. And everything is just made to last, even in a car of this. Well, it's a small car, but it's made really, really durable. This car also has some nice LED lighting. I just have uploaded a POV night drive, so if you want to watch it, I'll link it down in the description of this video. That way you'll see the whole illumination of the car, which is really, really awesome. It's a very nice option to choose if you, or just look for a car that already has that option if you're looking for the second-hand cars. It's a very, very, very nice addition and it makes it a lot more premium than, well, it is. The MME screen is just the same, just like the most Audi MME screens. We have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which is wireless, like I've said. There's a lot of options to choose from. It depends on the spec and trim level, of course. But like I've said, we can choose the background lighting or ambient lighting. Colors from here, we can set the tire pressure. We can, if this car has navigation, you can turn it on from here. And everything is just like your mobile phone. You can move and swivel it around where you just may wish. And we also have some shortcut buttons over there. And in terms of storage space, we also have some space over there. It isn't much, but it will. It will work. It can fit some of your belongings if you may wish. All right, so let's take it for a drive. And let's see if it really changed. If it can, well, amaze us. <laughs> if it can live up to the hefty price tag that it really does. Let's go. So let's see if we can maneuver it really easily over here. We don't have a parking camera, but we have really nice side mirrors in terms of turning radius. It is quite okay in my uh, opinion. The first thing that we notice, but well, we are driving on a very, well, very dirty, <laughs> dirty road with a lot of uh, stones and chips, but it works. The first thing that I notice is that I'm hearing a lot of noise, road noise especially. This car is, well, it's a small city car, which you can use for well, a lot of purposes, but I can hear a lot of road noise. It may be because of the tarmac that this over here, but I can hear a lot of sound, so it isn't insulated that well, but I wouldn't expect that from a car of this size. But that's one of the first impressions I'm getting over here. Alright, so let's see if this car has a little bit of a punch <laughs> on the highway speeds. It, Like I've said, it has a lot of road noise in my opinion, but let's see if it will also continue to do that on the highway speeds. I expect it to do, but well, we will enjoy that ride together. Alright, so let's see how this car packs up onto the highway speeds. Like I've said, the transmission and everything, it works flawlessly. And the 95 horsepower in a car that's this light, the power to weight ratio is fine in my opinion. You can really drive it economical, <laughs> but you can also try to push it and that's one of the well biggest pluses of this car it is really direct and it listens to what the driver is trying to do it doesn't understeer that much and if it does it picks up really fast and then you also get the grip that you were well expecting so it's a very it's a very predictive car and also a fun car to drive so driving on highway speeds we can already hear and tell that there is a lot of well tarmac noise from the wheels or the tires and a lot of wind noise it's not that windy today but well I can really hear it so that is one of those well, the second downsides in my opinion it's really really windy and of course it does matter what kind of tires you have on this car maybe if you buy even more premium or well silent tires that way you can eliminate a lot of the tire noise from the tarmac but well that is one of the things that I'm also noticing on highway speeds. Other than that, it really, well, it is quite comfortable. The seats are, well, really good, especially with the high bolstering and the lumbar support on the S edition or advanced edition models. I really like the seating position in this car. And 
I don't have any back pain as of now and I well, have driven quite some miles with this car in kilometers and I didn't have any back issues in some cars I do especially some SUV models or well sedans but in this car I really don't which is a very big big plus interior wise it really is an Audi everything is laid out where it should be like I've said there is some shortcuts for your lane assist you can control all of your virtual cockpit over there you can easily touch the multimedia display there we have some well, haptic feedback if you may call it like that and a really nice click you can control your climatronic here everything is just like where it should be and that's why it is really an Audi and it drives like an Audi even though it's the well entry-level car it has some downsides like I've said it is a little bit noisier and there are some design flaws like the <laughs> speakers in the back it looks sporty and well it drives really well in that type of sense but it has some flaws and but it lives up to the hefty price tag in my opinion if you compare it to a Volkswagen Polo with like well comparable specs it the price difference isn't that much anymore so well in my opinion if you have well a little bit more spare cash to spend I would always go for the A1 comparing it to a Volkswagen Polo and especially if you want a very very aggressive looking car the Polo also looks very nice I'm not saying anything negative about that but the Audi also has a like I've said a very upmarket feeling and especially in the S edition models it looks very uh, aggressive the three cylinder really picks up fast the car steers really direct in that sense and like I've said if you just throw it into a corner it will it will really 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 hold its grip and that's because of the power <laughs> to weight ratio and it's not that understeer as like some of the Audi models were so it's a very uh, very big step up in that sense and like I've said you can drive it really economical and you can try to have some fun with it driving on this cobblestone like I've said we can really hear the suspension and everything it is the S edition suspension so it's a lot firmer than the normal suspension in the Audi A1 but that also gives it the possibility to <laughs> have fun in the corners with this car and just have a very predictable or well, small uh, city sporty hatchback like the sportback well they haven't thought that long about it it's a sporty hatchback in terms of uh, design and well practicality so that's why so all in all I just love the car it looks really sporty the Audi A1 is priced not that much above the Volkswagen Polo but you have a lot more well design elements and you can really really feel and see that it is a real Audi even though it's an entry-level car in the model lineup the one liter version of this car really packs a punch and the, you can also get it in an Audi A3 but in that car it really feels slow and a little bit sluggish sadly there you'll just really need a 1.5 liter but in this car the one liter is very sublime the clutch the steering everything is refined just like an Audi should be all in all a very 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 good well maybe first car in that sense it's cheap in insurance cheap in road tax it has a lot of presence and that way the resale value of this car will also keep especially on the S edition models the resale value of Audi's well it is not that bad in that <laughs> sense so it also has some positives <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next review. Let me know what car to review next. And have a nice day. Ciao, ciao.